If you wanted to use a more sophisticated recorder, one option is to use the Tascam DR60D Mark II, which is a standalone recorder. To do this, you're going to need to check out the recorder, some sort of a microphone, an XLR cable, four AA batteries, or a standalone battery pack if that's available, and then an SD card. The considerations that we need to think about with any digital recorder, how do we power it? How do we turn it on? We need to make sure we set up the bit depth and the sample rate correctly. We need to choose the right input. Which connector is feeding the recording? Is it an XLR? Is it an eighth inch? We need to think about the input level. If it's going through a microphone, we're gonna to have to turn that level up with a microphone preamplifier. Or maybe it's coming from a camera and it's already at line level. The other thing I need to do is make sure that I'm not overloading. Am I using a condenser mic? Do I need phantom power? I need to figure out how to record the signal. I need to verify the playback once it is recorded. And then I need to be able to transfer the files off of the digital recorder onto my digital editing system. First thing you need to do is get power into the unit. You can open up the battery pack right here, which houses four AA batteries. One of the handiest things you can buy in digital filmmaking are these little power packs that you can get at any electronic store that you can use to charge your phone. These will also work to charge the recorder. If you are using a power adapter, you just take the mini USB cable and then plug it in right here, right underneath the SD card on the same side as the power button. Grab your SD card for storage, then go ahead and push it in. It will only go in one way, so you don't need to worry about that. Then go ahead and turn on the power button. If you do have a power supply plugged into the USB port, it's going to ask you if it is a power supply or if you are using the recorder as some sort of a storage device. And then it will go to its opening screen here. If you were to get a properly zeroed out recorder from your equipment supplier, the inputs would be set to line. This will protect your microphones and your microphone preamps. Then go ahead and plug your XLR into input number one, and then switch the input selector on the back to microphone if you're using a dynamic mic, or if you know that you need phantom power, then switch it over to mic plus phantom. But be careful with this because it's gonna wear down your batteries quicker. So how do you know if you're using a microphone that needs phantom power or not? One hint that sometimes works is that condenser mics will have a C or a K in the model number. Here's some examples that both follow this and don't. You have the Sheps CMIT 5, which is a high-end shotgun mic, the Rode NTG3, which doesn't follow that rule, the Sennheiser MKH416, another common shotgun, and then the Neumann KMR81, all of which are condenser microphones that need phantom power. There's two basic controls on this Tascam unit. You have the menu button, and then you also have this dial, but when you press it in, it sort of acts as a return key, like on a keyboard. The menu key will take you into the menu, but it will also act as an escape key, and it takes you back out to the previous level. The first thing we're going to do is go into record setting. So press the dial, and then it takes you into this page. And the first thing we need to do is set the format. So hit the enter button again, then it will allow you to change the parameter. So right now it's 24 bit. You can change it to different things, but we do want a 24 bit wave file. Then you go down to sample and we wanna make sure that this is set to 48. Let's go back out to the menu. The next step is to go into record mode. And we are only recording one microphone. So normally you would think that we would record this in mono, but this recorder has a really interesting feature. We can switch this over to dual mono. You can see here that it has a second level setting. What this does is it creates a safety recording on channel two at this lower level, and it makes it so if somebody screams all of a sudden, or there's a quick sudden transient, it's not gonna overload your recorder. Hit escape, go back out, 
Then we want to go into input setting. This is actually where we set the level of the sensitivity of our microphone preamp. So usually mid is a pretty good place to start. If I'm overloading or if my levels are too low, I might want to change that. I also notice here that my low cut is on. That's going to roll off any sort of low frequency rumble like wind noise, but normally I'll start with this off. Next thing I want to do is set my levels. Right now I notice that my levels are a little bit low. I'm going to take this knob that says 1 slash L and I'm going to turn it up so my meters are bouncing somewhere in the middle. I like to run my levels between negative 16 and negative 12. I just want to make sure that they don't get up so high that I'm overloading. Once I'm satisfied with my levels, I will hit the record button. It will start flashing. That's just a warning. If I really want to record, I have to hit it again and it will go solid. And I can tell that I'm recording because I'm seeing these numbers start to count. When I'm finished, I will hit stop. On a set, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to verify your recordings. So we'll go back and we'll play it to make sure that it's the quality that we want it to be at. Here on the side, you have a headphone jack. And right above it, you have a dial which allows you to set the volume to a comfortable monitoring level. Once I'm done for the day, there's a very distinct order in which you shut down an audio system. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is turn down the microphone gain. The next thing, you take the input selector switch and put it over to line. This is gonna turn off your mic preamp and also turn off phantom power. It's important to do this before I unplug my microphone cable on the side. Once you're done, you can open up this rubber flap, remove your SD card. A lot of computers these days on the side will have an SD card port and you can just plug this right into your computer and it will show up as a hard drive on your computer and you can just copy your files right over. I hope this overview of the Tascam DR60D Mark II was useful for you. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions.